Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by Emmanuel Oyewale, a voice on 99.3 Nigeria Info, and now a regular face on Hello Nigeria. Yeah. We're starting the show together. It's good to have you, Emmanuel. Oh, Always welcome. <laughs> you didn't come last week. There was a day last week you didn't come. What happened? Um, I think it was a public holiday. Ah, now, nah, wow. Yeah. You don't even know that there's no public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's My no sister. public holiday. My sister. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, let's let's start the conversation. The things we do for the job. I know, right? Let's start the conversation with something that is um, sweet and sour. Sweet because he eventually got his freedom, but sour because mm. he's had to pay for years, his mm. life, his time, his health, mm. his mental state in prison. Clinton Kanu, a 56-year-old man, was wrongly imprisoned for 27 years in River State and seeks a 20 billion naira compensation. He said he will demand this 20 billion naira compensation for spending 27 years behind bars for a crime he did not commit. Kanu, who was sentenced to death in 1992 for murder, was freed by the Supreme Court on the 5th of April 2019. The Okigwe Imo State Bond consultant criminologist explained that though he made efforts to absolve himself from a gang up that led to his incarceration, nobody was ready to listen to him until he was jailed. Whilst in prison, Kanu lost his mother. Coupled with the fact that he was not married, he said he fought loneliness. Kanu, who recounted the incident that led to his travel, said that about 27 years ago, some people were accused of stealing a generator and fluorescent tubes. They were my in-laws. Kanu argued that he will demand 20 billion compensation from the federal government and his state, Imo State, for the damage done to his business. He also stated that he developed ill health due to the prison's dirty environment, adding that with the help of his lawyer, he hoped to be well compensated. Now, this is a very sad story. Sad because he's lost his youth. Imagine being incarcerated in your prime. So let's say he was roughly, he was about was 29, 29 years, years old, yeah. when he was imprisoned. And that is the time when your life as a young person is just starting. The hopes of building a dream for himself flushed down the drain. The hopes of getting married. He lost his family during his stay in prison. And now he's out. So the good news is, yes, he didn't, he didn't die for a crime he did not commit, having been sentenced to death in 1992. However... Don't you think that this is a little too late, the release? And it's 20 billion naira adequate compensation. Okay, so there are many sides to this story. Um, one is the fact that it's, it's pitiable to say the fact that lots of people in the prison system in Nigeria are either awaiting trial or serving sentences or jail terms for offenses they never committed. You know, having the privilege to go to Agodi prisons um, once during my school days for a project. And by the time I went there, the, the, the prison controller told us that more than half of the persons in that prison had not undergone trial. And some of them had spent over five, six, seven, ten years or more in prison. And some of them were arrested for things such as um, stealing pepe. Or All you know. manner of offenses. So you ask someone who has spent ten years in prison, for example, when is he going to go through trial? If it happens that he was not convicted, what happens? Now, in his own case now, now imagine somebody who has spent 27 years in prison. Don't forget, he's going to come out to a whole new life. That means when he was sent to prison, there, was, there were no mobile phones. Mm. He's going to come out and see mobile phones. So he's, he's coming out with that shock of his life. Everything has changed. He was not married. He lost his mom. You know, thank God for his church that is helping to, you know, shelter him and then feed him. It's a whole new mental shock for a person. And then it begs the question of our judicial system. How effective is our judicial system? No, make no mistake, everywhere around the world, people are wrongfully in prison. Everywhere around the world. In the United States of everywhere, America. Everywhere, everywhere. I mean, sure. the story comes to mind of um, one young man, Kenny, Kenny by name, in, I think in 1982, who spent like 18 years in prison for an mm. offense he never committed. In his own case, in fact, the Edaster went back to school to buy a degree in law to fight his cause. So she came back and then she had to fight. Eventually, she discovered that with the help of the police and with the help of um, false witness, they got him jailed. But of course, he got, he, got, he, got, he got a pardon. But then again, in many of these countries as well, it's always very difficult to get compensation. For example, in the US, for example, in some states, um, they have a limit of $20,000 to $250,000 in terms of compensation. Some other state, like Mississippi, you know, have it up to half a million dollars. But most people don't end up getting those conversations. Sometimes getting it is a whole lot of, you know, hard work and, and legal tussle. So we now ask ourselves, in a system like Nigeria where we know things don't really work, 
can this man really get compensation? Okay, we will continue this conversation in a moment, but the phone lines are open. If you want to be a part of the conversation, the numbers to call are on your TV screen. God forbid. We know that the first thing that, you know, we're Nigerians, first thing we say is, God forbid. But truly, anybody can be wrongfully imprisoned. And if you were, what would your response be? What do you think should be adequate compensation? Or better put, in the case of this man, what do you think would be adequate compensation for the years that he spent behind bars? Okay, so now I'm going to look at it from the angle of, um, because I also know a story of somebody who actually went through this. Um, his own case was in African prison in Calabar. Okay. Now that's a maximum prison in Calabar. Mm -hmm. And my church actually had this prison outreach thing. So he has a ministry now, he's a pastor, and he came to talk to men there. And he openly said, in front of even the prison warden said that, his own case, he just got picked up in a raid. It's not like somebody said he was walking on the street, coming back you know, from work, they picked him up. And then if it wasn't for his church, I don't want to mention the church name, the Pentecostal church, he would have been there for longer than four years. So they took his phone. He had a phone, but they took it away. There was no way to contact anybody. And he said he met this prison warden that was like a devil, sorry, that just made things so hard. Reaching anybody was so hard. And he kept asking himself, how did I get here? There have been people who have gotten there. He met people who were there 10 years before him. They had never been to a court too. Now, if we're going to talk about the justice system. We want to talk about the police. I want to look at the human angle right now and ask, what are you doing as a Nigerian when you know that you work in the prisons, somebody gets into your custody, and you know that this person has not been heard in a court? Even if the police is falling short, is your humanity not supposed to be working enough for you to say, OK, I should give word about this. We should get this person to the needed authorities so that, yes, there should be trial. No, actually, the, you know, the Constitution does provide for that. But the thing is, it's not whether we have the laws that govern these people, that protects them. It's the enforcement of this law. Mm -hmm. So we know that, you know, the law as it is, is a far cry from the law as it ought to be. Sure. Usually when you're arrested, you should be brought, be brought before a court of competent jurisdiction within 24 to 48 hours, depending on, uh, you know, the, the, dis the, the distance, case. you know, yes. from where you and are to distance. a courtroom and all that. And then we, we have people that have been in court. But the problem is, lots of people raise several arguments against, or arguments that, that um, show a shortcoming. Mm -hmm. First of all, before I go ahead, let's take a call from Matthew. Hello, Matthew. Good evening, and thank you for calling. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Um, okay, please feel free to call back in a bit. Now, we're talking about the judicial system, the justice system, what the court says, what the Constitution says. Mm -hmm. But then people are making reference to the fact that we are under a government that says it operates the rule of law. Whereas El Zagzaki ought to have been let go since 2015 and hasn't been let go and he's still held in custody. Mm -hmm. This is still, it's, a, it's, it's just a bigger platform, but it's the same thing. Somebody being, okay, no, El Zagzaki's owners that he's arrested for an offense. This one is arrested for an offense he did not commit. By the end of the day, everybody's entitled to have their day in court. One of the principles for um, natural justice would be that, you know, you are given fair hearing, you are brought before a court of competent jurisdiction. And even if you killed somebody under the law, you are entitled to defense. Every Everybody is entitled to defense. But we are not even seeing all of this happening. The government, our government of the day, some people have argued that the government of the day is finding a way to shield itself from doing what the law actually says. So how do we expect that the everyday man would be given the opportunity to come before a court of competent jurisdiction when mm. the, the El Zagzakis and, you know, several other people are being held within uh, um, cells and within certain holding facilities are not allowed to come before court. Let's what? hear from Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Good evening. Hello? Okay, it seems that that call has gone again, but mm -hmm. please feel free to call back. Okay, so um, there's this popular saying that um, the hope of the common man is the judiciary. But of course, we all know that that in Nigeria is not the case. And um, in the words of Benjamin Franklin, um, you know, he, he, he is of the op opinion that it's better for us to allow 100 culprits go free than for, than one, for innocent. one innocent person to suffer, which I think should be the premise on which any workable judicial system you know, should, should function. Because you know, 
just, just imagine what 27 years is like. You know, imagine, just, just subtract your age from 27 and see what, what is left. That's finished. That's finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost no, but, finished. But it's not, no, so it's not a joke. No, no, hold on. I'm, I'm not going to agree that it's a joke. If I, if I have to do the math, I, re I remember when this news came up. We have a call. When we come back, I'm going to talk about. Hello, welcome. Hello. Hello, good evening. Thank you for calling. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Matthew from here. Thank you, Mr. Matthew, for calling. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I want to contribute to the, the issue that is going on uh, with the Wazobia uh, uh, TV. Please go ahead. Hello? Yes, please go ahead. Please we can hear ahead. you. Yes, but can, can't you link me up to talk to them? Oh, unfortunately, you're calling in to a live show, and we're discussing some very um, important issues with regards to wrongful incarceration. So maybe you can tune in and watch the show and then call to contribute. But if we have other matters to discuss, then you can call us after the show. Thank you so much for calling us, Mr. Matthew. Now, this conversation, let's also look at another angle. Another angle will be the death sentence. Mm. Lots of people have advocated against the death sentence. Several countries are advocating against the death sentence, saying that it should be abolished. And rather than having a death sentence, you know, people, people should be given a second chance at life, that you don't take away their yeah. rights to life. Now, if this man had been murdered, if his death sentence had been um, carried out, we would never have known the truth. We would never have known that he was innocent. True. And today Likely. he'd be dead. And there are several people who have been wrongfully convicted, sentenced to death, and died for a crime that they did not commit. So this brings us back to the argument for the death sentence. For or against the death sentence? Let's hear it. Um, for me, well, personally, I mean, I don't know if I said this on TV. Personally, there are some offenses that I think should come with a death sentence. Personally, some offenses that I think should come with a death sentence. All right, hold that thought. Let's take this call. Hello, good evening, and thank you for Hello, calling. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Hello, Nigeria. Yeah. Hello? Yes, go ahead. We can hear we you. Can thank you for you. calling. Hello, Nigeria. OK, I just want to participate in what uh, people are discussing. All right, please. Can you please speak up as well so we can hear you clearly? OK. At least the man that you say is sentenced in for 20, have you get the jail limit for 27 years or 29 yes. years? Yes. At least, at least they, so they, need, they need to compensate it. Okay. We so agree that, that he should be compensated, but do you think that 20 billion is adequate compensation? And do you think that he will get that compensation? Uh, no, 20 billion is too much. <laughs> oh, really? At least maybe it's, <laughs> it's too much. They can reduce it. So in your, in your, from where you stand, 27 years, what can you equate 27 years to financially? How much would do? Is that what? So how much would be appropriate from where you stand? At least if they can give him like uh, maybe 18 or 17, it's okay. 18 or 17 billion? Yes. Oh, okay. Billion, yes. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Okay, so we're speaking about the death sentence okay. before that call came in. Yes, yeah, so, like I said, there are some offenses that I think should warrant death sentence, personally. One of them is rape. One of them is rape. One of them is child molestation. I think people that do that should get death sentence. That's my opinion. But um, coming back to the death sentence, so you ask yourself, someone commits murder and is sentenced to death, what happens to someone whose negligence kills, leads to someone's death? Well, that one, the, the, the sentence is now reduced from death, from murder to uh, maybe life imprisonment because it's now manslaughter. So you're looking at the intention. With and the factors, actually. So was there, was there an intent? Was, there, was it intentionally done? Since it wasn't intentionally done, then it's reduced from murder to manslaughter. Let's take a call from Matthew calling from VI. Hello, Matthew. Good evening, and thank you for calling back. Hello, Matthew. Okay, it seems we're having a little bit of a um, connection problem going on there, but please keep calling. We'll be wrapping up this conversation in a moment. So, yes, um, the intent will now determine if it is a murder case or if it's manslaughter. So if it's not intentionally done, you know, then it can be reduced to manslaughter. Uh, and then let's also look at, you know, he talked about being accused for stealing a generator and fluorescent bulbs, and that well, was what... Uh, well, in, in the process, mm. someone got killed. Hello. Yeah. Someone got killed in the process. Okay, we still have Matthew online. Hello, Matthew. Please go ahead. Thank you for Hello. calling. 
Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I want to comment on that man that has been sentenced wrongly. All right. You know this story of uh, 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 detaining somebody wrongly is, is very common in this country. And uh, if this man can be, can get compensation, a very good compensation, it will serve as a deterrent to all those officers that always perpetuate that kind of a thing. I mean, it's very wrong. Because this man, now, there's no amount of money that he will receive that will take care of this. Because, they, you know, the, the length of damage is much. 20, 27 years in jail. Look at how that man is. I don't think maybe he will have family anymore. So how much are they going to pay him that will take care of all these things? Even if, if, I, if I may say that 20, 20 billion naira is, is even is even a, 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 is a chicken change. Let me just put it that way. So let him go and let him go and get enough lawyer that is going to, that is going to fight this cause for him. Let him get his, himself well compensated because his life has been ruined. That is my own. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank, Thank you, you so much for calling. And honestly, I like what he said. There is no amount of money that would be given to him that would buy back the years that he's lost. Yeah, but do you think this man will get 20 billion? That is Nigeria? another conversation well, for Because well. even in the U.S., they don't pay that kind of amount for compensation. In some, co in some states in the U.S., for example, what they pay you is $20,000 per year. And they pay you for a maximum of 10 years, even if you have spent more than that in prison. I think the highest, as at my last uh, check, was Mississippi that pays you half a million mm. dollars. So that is nothing near, that's not, nothing near one billion naira in the first place. So I don't think a country like Nigeria will pay that amount. We don't even have that money to pay. You know, like, I don't so, know. I mean, but it's a, it's a really unfortunate. Not even well, in a well, country well, where we don't well. even have such laws that says if you're wrongfully accused, this is what you get back. I'm not sure we have such laws. But, but at least if we have to calculate all that he has lost, come on, at 56 year old. No, I, I'm, no, not, he's saying, not saying I'm not saying that he's not worthy. I know, I I'm know. I'm saying the system we are in is a very wonderful system. I'm not sure they're going to pay that kind of amount. Unfortunate, wow. unfortunate incidents. And we'll, we'll follow up with this case. Hopefully his lawyers can negotiate him a very, very good deal. We'll be wrapping up this conversation with, but with our last caller, Matthew, a persistent caller. We hope you can get through this time. Good evening, Matthew. Thank you for calling. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much for calling. Yeah, I'm calling from Ikorodu. All right. Please go ahead. Okay. I want to contribute uh, on these uh, issues. Go ahead, please. Uh, as long as I'm concerned, I think uh, this man has to be, in fact, well paid. Because the, the, the money is not, uh, to me, it's not too, too much. Like, if you see what Nigerian police are doing on the raid, you know, raiding people unnecessarily and so on, it's too bad. Right. And this maybe if the government, if this man should fight this cause, this will bring the morale of the police to, and uh, you know, this will bring them to understand that they don't just arrest somebody just like that and, 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 and send the person to jail. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So I think this man should be where you no know, pay. And, he, 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 and the government should, and this one will make me to say that the government should also, you know, draw the attention of police, of Nigerian police to, uh, 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 the attention of Nigerian police to what they do, the way they arrest people and how they handle Nigerians when they are arrested. All right. I think that would be better. Thank you very so much for your contribution. Thank you so thank much for you. calling. And thank you for calling back again, even when you couldn't get through it. Thank you. Now, as much as we know that Nigerian police is on the hot seat right now, it'd be fair to mention that they're not entirely to blame in this case. Yes, they arrested the man. But when you're looking holistically at this, we have the Nigerian police. We have also, you know, the fact that there's, we have a legal system. The so, courts of jurisdictions that actually gave hearing to this man. So be, before, if, I don't know if he's even been brought to, mm. take a, to take a plea. I don't know if he's been brought before any court at all to okay. take a plea. So these are some of the things we look at. So the, the ministry, his state, we're looking at the state judiciary. What is the state judiciary doing to declutter the prison? Because that is why we have you people. We have you because you're, you're representing the state. So in this, in this case, it would be a state of, you know, so, 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 and so person against the state. Yeah. Now, so, know, what is the state doing about it? What are the state council doing about it? But really? then again, we cannot exonerate the police at the moment because we don't have the. No, full I'm not details. saying we're not exonerating. Because exonerate in the case I mentioned, I said holistically, we're looking at it. I, I, I there are many in the case people I mentioned in the U.S., the police actually aided the false witness to come to the courts to to give their witnesses. 
So it's something we need to look at holistically. Who are those involved? What, what, was, what was said in the court? Who spoke against him? Who accused him? If what was, was the role of the police in this case? Was he even brought to the court at all is the first question. Was he brought to take a plea? Then if he was brought to take a plea, at what point, you know, how did he adjourn? But sentence they said he without... was sentenced. So okay, yes, he went to court. He went to court? Yes, he did. He, he went was. to court. That's That's from his story that I read, he gave some witnesses against him. That so he was sentenced, yes, that's true. It's a you know, sentence. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we hope that this doesn't happen to us. That's what we all keep saying. But we will continually speak about things like this and bring our, draw the light and the attention to issues like this because they're real issues. Our prayers and our thoughts are with Kano. And we hope that he gets compensation. It might not seem adequate in our eyes, but we hope that, you know, we cannot buy back the years he lost. But we hope that he can find a way to fit into society and start all over again. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.